So, good morning everyone. Today, I'm going to share about this uh, exosome papers recently published in High Impact Journal. So, the title, they can be categorized like two. How they tailor exosome during biogenesis or post-collection. And the second one is how they utilize exosome and cell membrane together for biomaterials. So this is published in 2016, in Advanced Functional Material. So they, during biogenesis of exosome, yeah, EV, yeah, they, they modulate some, something, and then after post-collection, they also load the small SI interfering RNA as a delivery tool. In 2016, so this is some how they do. Uh, this is a cell, and then first they make this kind of uh, micro vesicles, and then they sonicate them and extrusion, so their size should be down, like to uh, EV, 50 to 150 nanometer, which is called nano vesicles, and then they load sRNA after post correction. So this is their specific methodology, how they do. Uh, so for loading the sRNA first, uh, sRNA would encapsulate in nano vesicles by electroporation, as previously described. So they just mix sRNA and the nano vesicles called EV, and then they perform electroporation. This normal way how to load sRNA to certain liposome. And then this nanovesicle and sRNA mixed this electroporate buffer one to one and they electroporate for in certain qubit. And then to measure the loading and releasing amount, it can be done by just normal libo green assay. Yeah. So, so this is uh, I will show you about this how they make this micro vesicle. So they just uh, glutaldehyde treatment and then fixation and then as far as I saw they just uh, fix this uh, cell structure and then they physically sonicate and extrude to make this kind of nanophysicals. So this is an exosome. Uh, normally we can uh, gather this exosome from the cell membrane but this is their artificial exosome nano PMMV looks have similar size and similar potential as a minus because of cell membrane. And the cell number... So, nano vehicles when in the treat with the cell, so nano vehicles go inside the cell? Yeah, inside the cell. It's same as the exosomes. Same, same as like when I say in the magnetic yeah, yeah, right, right. Similar, the people have to Yeah, right, right. Actually, in that case, I'm not sure they sonicate them or not. No, no, sonicate. They sonicate, they like after sonication, nucleus is uh, destroyed, mm. and then after yeah, right, right, filtration, yeah. Maybe almost similar method. Yeah. And then they count how many vesicles per cell they can obtain, obtain, and then per hour. And then they observe sRNA, sci-fi, successfully loaded in this exosome as well as their artificial exosome using this uh, electro sonication extrusion. So we can say SRN loading is relatively easy for exosome by electroporation. And then further step, they want to increase the efficacy of cellular uptake. So they incorporate RGD, cell adhesion peptide, followed by GS linker, and then second RGD, or poly RG, CPP into N terminus of LAM2B protein, which is abundantly expressed on external membrane. So they a little bit uh, modify this cell before they collect the nanovesicles. So they transfect this plasmid. And this plasmid, they can have RGD sequence and certain linker. And then when this plasmid are transfected, yeah, this plasmid name is LAMP2B, overexpressed. And then their exosome have a lot of RGD site on the cell membrane. And then maybe they can expect this uh, 
during the biogenesis of nanoparticles, this uh, exosome-like nanoparticle that can be obtained in the cell better than normal nanoparticles. This is their hypothesis. And then after fabrication, maybe in the same manner they can load sRNA and then check their efficacy. So let's see one by one. And then this is how they do the uh, plasmid transfection. So the modified lamp to plasmid transfected to hex cell and then human adipose drive stem cell using electroporation system. Two days later of transfection, cell were refreshed with exosome free media. Okay, and culture for another two out two days, and the media one then retrieve, then refuse, remove some debris, and then superintendent of sub media was filtered through sort of blah blah blah. This is how they make the exosome from after transfection. And then when they make nanophysicals, yeah, they can make the same manner which I which I showed before. And then the merit of the, this multiple RT sequence play a key role in cell radiation and receptor mediated intermediate and known to bind integrin alpha 5 beta 1. And then CPP also rich in basic residue and then facilitate the efficient intracellular delivery of various biomolecules. So, so they, they, hypothesis, they hypothesize that engineer exosome and then they can successfully sRNA loading by interpolation. Also, this is not their first idea. Already, uh, the previously they used this lamp to be yeah, show some good expression of the this on the cell membrane when they're transfected. Yeah, yeah, actually this cover with the cell and then when the, this cell mm -hmm. after uh, this transfection they can make exosomes mm -hmm. and then this exosome also their source is from the cell membrane. Uh, because uh, when, when the abstraction biosonication, mm -hmm. so definitely one cell layer is outside. No? Mm -hmm. The tide is inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, in this case, after getting these exosomes, mm -hmm. and then they want to load sRNA. So be before getting the exosome, maybe they assume there is not much of uh, interest of molecule inside of these physicals. Yeah. So as Dr. Ajandra told us, when you transfect this uh, plasmid, uh, they can affect the cell membrane, have more RGD, and including CPP, Definitely, they are expressed in cell membrane. And then during the genesis of the exosome, this highly expressed RGD and TPP, CPP, they can be uh, transferred to these uh, nano vesicles. Yeah. When you look at study about the, how the exosome are fabricated from the cell, you can easily know. This exosome, cell, exosome membrane is from the cell membrane, almost. So, yeah, let's see. This is some low treatment. And then scramble, they actually did some uh, GFP positive cell originally. And then scramble sRNA, and then exosome, and then their artificial exosome, let's say. And then they load sRNA GFP, which means that when this SI GFP is transfected to this uh, GFP positive cell, the color is gone, which means successfully they can remove GFP using SI GFP. So exosome, yeah, and exosome RGD, blah, blah. So you can say that uh, these five things or they can successfully remove the GFP, which means that they can successfully uh, transfer this uh, sRNA to the target cell. So this is some the artificial things and the exosome, original exosome, exosome modify RGD and then a half modification. So this is their quantification. So 
uh, here scrambling just 3% and then this is their passive control using in 2000, 65% uh, decrease and then you can see a little uh, increase in this uh, modification with after transfection and then similar as the, this artificial exosome. And then actually the effect efficacy is not that much dramatic, I feel. It. But the concept is good. So this epoperfectamine, passive control, exosome, little modification, RGD modification, and artificial, yeah, it will be knocked down in a similar way, but not much of survivability change. Even in uh, stem cell, they can observe this. Uh, in this time, they use GAPDH. So they knock down the gap ditch. So lipoproctamine like 50% knockdown. And then hex drive or adipotis drive exosomes uh, or artificial exosome, they knock down in similar way to lipoproctamine. So, and then not much of survivability. And then you can ask why we have to use exosome? Because survivability, when you look at it, is a little bit decreased, but in case of exosome, not much of decrease. So the merit of using exosome or artificial EV is their biocompatibility. And then even in human NSC, uh, we can knock, uh, successfully knock down GAPGH. Yeah. And then better survivability. So we can say that exosome engineering during biogenesis using plasmid, using LAMP2, exosome membrane, protein modification, and then in this paper, they do some in vivo to confirm this efficacy. Uh, so anyhow, they successfully show something. But th regarding this 2016, the year of publication, and then in vivo study, maybe they can publish in this journal. And then 2018 in advanced, advanced material, uh, you know this, this woman, Molly Stevens. They use EV uh, to load uh, enzyme as a pro-drug therapy. So what is, what is the pro-drug? Uh, some people know about the pro-drug. So their hypothesis is that this is some their EV, and then they load beta glucolidase this enzyme. And then when this enzyme, they can meet curcumin glucoride, and then this curcumin glucoride no function, but when they meet this enzyme, they can convert to curcumin, which is, has functionality. Yeah. So how they load this uh, enzyme in the ex EV? EVs were mixed with this enzyme and saponin, and incubate them for 10 minutes, just simple incubation. And when you look at the material method, this enzyme encapsulated in EV derived from MSC. Well, actually, they use liposome as a artificial control group via saponin treatment. Actually, I didn't go detail about the saponin treatment, how they do. I didn't look at it. But they mentioned it's very their special ability. And then the vesicles were mixed into PVA solution. And then this PVA solution is for hydrogel encapsulation. They use PV hydrogel to encapsulate this exosome, and then followed by cross-linking with PEG entering hydrogen with this physical per gel. So they obtain this EV and then load this enzyme, and then this complex that can be incorporated in PVA hydrogel. And then this is their morphology. Yeah. Hydrogel morphology, and then some are just enzyme loaded, and EV loaded. And then uh, maybe that is EV also they obtain the enzyme. And then artificial liposome uh, consisting of this DMPC, DPPC, and then non loaded hydrogen. Uh, yeah, and then this uh, complex model is similar. Yeah, no region they have some different complex modulus. And then this is their uh, observation. How uh, really this uh, PV hydrogel, they can obtain this EV using certain dye. Yeah, depending on the EV concentration, you can see more the green color. And then other thing is very, um, not much, 
difficult. So, so they characterize EV without and with load, so this enzyme, similar particle size, and then particle number, and this liposome, artificial liposome, oh, after loading, without loading the enzyme. And then how they control the load, one hour incubation, depending on their initial enzyme concentration, they can observe like this. 16 hour incubation, they're more a fast observation, large, more, more loading. And then per EV, how much signal they can obtain? They, they want to say similar uh, this enzyme uptaking in the EV or liposome. But as you see, huge standard deviation. Yeah. So they region they put in supplementary. Anyhow, they uh, they can say exosome can load pro drug enzyme by simple mixing and saponin treatment. So when I look at this uh, beta glucose size, their morphology, I'm not sure we can load any kind of uh, enzyme in this uh, EV, but maybe this EV also consists of some lipid, so. Maybe your enzyme or your drug have lipid compatibility that can successfully load. And then they want to do some uh, functional study. So in this media, all have curcumin beta D glucoradi. This is some before uh, no functionality, but when they meet enzyme inside of the hydrogel in the EV, they can convert to the Curcumin, okay? So curcumin color is yellow, but their original uh, substrate color is orange. So non load hydrogel, they maintain the orange color, but EV with the uh, enzyme and liposome with enzyme, you can see color change. And then they check cell viability. Actually, mean in the low, certain optimal concentration of curcumin, they can make cells survive, but in this time, they want to make them dead using higher concentration. So higher curcumin formation, uh, less cell viability. So cell alone, without treatment like this, but no load hydrogel, I don't know why they show this, but they mentioned non-significant difference compared to this non-loaded. And then this hydrogel without EV and liposome also show significant different decrease. And then EV with enzyme, liposome with enzyme, decrease. So they may be disappointed because they have to show these three have some difference, right? So they want to do again. Yeah, second cycle. Because they want to highlight the merit of the EV and liposome. And then they, now they yeah, found even this uh, with this a, a lot of hydro, a lot of synthetic deviation, this uh, only without EV and liposome, no difference, but they have difference. So they can say, and actually this they are using this uh, low cell as a target cell. So they want to show the merit of the EV loading in the enzyme because they can continuously show something because they can release some slow releasing pattern. And then, uh, depending on the concentration of curcumin, this original substrate, uh, they can say more concentration of the, this original substrate, they can see more decrease of their viability. And then, uh, in the absence of the, this uh, original substrate, no much of change. So, when I saw this paper wholly, maybe the, maybe the guy doesn't have any good hand because they have very big stand deviation. So, and then actually they want to check some functionality. This is some there some uh, functionality using mouse macrophage, how to kill the macrophage, but this is not their original design. But when I look at this uh, result, I can see why this result in, in the supplementary. So they use bone marrow macrophage, and then they check TNF-alpha expression. 
So this EV hydrogel and liposome, this encapsulation, and that this BMM is incubated with LPS, and then with this curcumin glucoside as a origin substrate and PBS alone, and then the expression of TNF alpha by the PCR and ELISA assay. So maybe this is from PCR, this is from the ELISA. In ELISA, control LPS, EV hydrogel with enzyme, liposome and enzyme only, no change. But in gene expression, they can see some change. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, with LPS, even with LPS, they can show decrease. And then this is also liposome, also a little bit decrease. But in case of this drug only, without EV and liposome, also decrease. So even though they mentioned this is two star and one star, so this is better than others, but I don't know. And then, and in this uh, ELISA study, they didn't show even change in these three groups compared to control LPS. And then they mentioned in, like, observe, average lower TNF alpha concentration for EV hydro treated BMDM, although this was not significant, possibly due to only 24 time point. So if I'm reviewer, yeah, two, 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 two days later, but yeah, anyhow, they just move on. So actually, they didn't do any in vivo study. Maybe this concept is quite new at the time, so they can publish in this good journal. And then this is a little bit other than before. Uh, previously, I mentioned about biogenesis after using transfection method, and then how they load some srRNA or enzyme in the EV. In this manner, they want to show 3D cellular architecture affect microRNA or protein cargo of EV. So simply, they want to say 3D condition is better than 2D monolayer mono for fabricating good exosomes. So how they collect exosome in 2D, 2D and 3D? So exosome deplete FBA they use, and in 2D case, they use two-day incubation. In 3D, they use six-day incubation. For 2D culture, cell, CD, culture, blah, blah, and the next, wash it with PBS and <coughs> culture in EV depleted medium. You can buy or you can make EV depleted FBS. And then during 24 hour, and the condition media was used for EV isolation. Yeah. EV isolation is normal way using ultra centrifugation. In CD culture, cell CD micro well array, yeah, certain maybe OUNA used at the moment, and then cell CD in this density, and then 1,000 cell per well, and then the 3D culture were grown, supplement with 10%, and then culture for six day of EV deplete medium. So this is different, six day of from 3D, two day from 2D. And then this is some, yeah, how they make some micro well to make 3D structure. And then 3D, one day, so one, two, three, five, oh, sorry, yeah. And then they change in this medium, and then it's Three days of culture, after six days later, they collect. And then for 2D, signal cell, and then after two days later, uh, three days later, they change in EV deplete medium. After two days, they collect. And this EV isolation, same manner, uh, deep, deep, uh, remove the debris and cell and filter, ultra centrifuge, and collect EV. And then in this time, they do NTA. Uh, golden standard to checking the exosome number, bio-TM, image flow cytometry, and NGS, checking small siRNA, small RNA, and then uh, protein mass spectroscopy. And then they really want to do to show some, some difference. 
So let's see. So this is some their uh, EV, 2D and 3D. And this is a uh, cancer cell. Uh, one is less invasive cancer. The other one is very invasive cancer. Maybe this is more invasive cancer. 2D and 3D, yeah, similar morphology. And then particle size, a little bit decrease in 3D. But in other cell line, no much difference. And the EV per cell, only in this figure they said 3D is better than 2D. 3D has more generating EV. But as you can see, not much of significant difference. And then uh, this is some their, this is EV marker. But this cyto C is a control dye, no green signal. But you can see all green signal from here. This 2D, 3D, G cell, and 74 cell, the same manner. And this is their quantification. And then they check some microRNA profile and then other things. And then they said 3D EVs have more large number of microRNA. And then in case of cell also, they have large number. So more and different exosome from 3D condition versus 2D monolayer. Actually, they didn't do go deeper about the function of this, this microRNA or isolate from the exosome. Yeah. Because uh, as designed, initially, they want to say, want to show some difference. But in this manner, no change of cell viability. They target MCF10A. Maybe they want to say more increased cell viability or more decrease in this EV, 2D and 3D, 2D and 3D. Two lines, 45 cell line, 74 cell line, but no difference. Cell proliferation, no difference. Only cell invasion, highly expressed in this 3D condition. Yeah, and then cellular uptake, also a little increase in 3D. Yeah, sorry, actually 30 minutes, Similar, but five and 15 minutes, little increase in this 45 EV, then 74 EV. Yeah, this two M shep 10A, this breast cancer cell line. So maybe this is more invasive cell. So because of their invasiveness, more cellular uptake and then more cell invasion they can observe. But all this data in, in supplementary because they do not want to highlight. All of the main figure is regarding this kind of, um, they do their job. They show what they show something using QPCR, small RNA sequence, or any other things. But anyhow, something different in 3D and 2D. They consistently highlight this point, but they didn't do any good functionality of this 3D EV. And then, yeah, now I have two more paper. Yeah, this is uh, given from Haley. Yeah, thank you. So they, actually this is our, very similar to our design for our control site project using microsphere. So they called particle-based artificial three-dimensional stem cell spheroid for revasculation of ischemia disease. So this is their naming, but in, when you look at in detail, they make exosome and then cell membrane together. So how they do? So they use this adipose MNC, and then they chain the cell membrane using PGRGD. You can see the color, surface modified MNC, and then using this agarose gel, agarose gel cell never attach. So they can make spheroid. So using this uh, 3D spheroid, they fabricate exosome and cell membrane. Okay. So preparation of 3D SSP, and this CF is conditioning factor. Conditioning factor is conditioning media. So pre prepare uh, concentration and PGRGD culture media, and then cell suspension will incubate. Just one hour incubation using this PGRGD and cell is enough. And then 
formation of aggregate was observed in cell treated with PGRGD on agar gel. And such suspension were then plate on the sixth well of containing agar gel and culture overnight. The medium was specifically placed with serum free medium and continued to culture for a uh, continuing media collection. Yeah. So the reason why they use APGRGD provides cell cell junction due to highly expression of integrin on MS surface and then RG specific binding began. Surface modification with RGD was able to inhibit cell adhesion to matrix by blocking integrin interaction. So they isolate cell to cell interaction to make cell spheroid on agar gel. And then this is their uh, nucleus and AMSC on agar gel. You can see this is their diameter of the cell spheroid, and then this is their observation. In supplementary in 2D culture on agar gel. Uh, sorry, this is some. Yeah. 2D culture, and then PEG only, RGD only, PEG RGD together, we pain in concentration. As you can see, more PEG RGD is conjugated with cell membrane and cell membrane, and then this cell can have more cell aggregation. But none of them has their cells, this very good cell adhesion, maybe the TCP or other agar gel on the surface. <coughs> this is without uh, Binding ligand, they rarely attach, but only with this APG RGD because of higher cell to cell interaction, cell spheroids are obtained. Oh, they mention this RGD sequence that can provide more cell to cell junction, Com not cell to ECM junction. And then maybe agarose, they don't have any RGD binding site. So, so I think also this is a little bit, um, I can understand 100%. Maybe if they use this RGD PG cell on the TCP or RGD binding matrix, maybe they can better bind. But because of this agarose cell, maybe they are making more spherid. Mm. They want. Yeah. So if we can. Uh, this is also possible mostly because mm. uh, agro gel is a kind of uh, agro gel. Right. Right. Like with water and water. Mm. So they make the porous, right? Mm -hmm. no? So when you see the cell, so cell also inside the pore and then outside is possible. Yeah. They can be also possible, but uh, maybe, but their rationale is that maybe they assume this gel is just a little bit a smooth surface. Yeah. And then maybe, yeah, like Professor Kim said, this PEG RGD, we can replace this one to our material, like LDH or graphene oxide, other material, they can give more cell to cell junction. Maybe we can make, or we can just use mold. Yeah, our we can use the commercial board to make the cell spherical. This is not their originality, actually. Just give some one ingredient to, uh, to increase impact. And then they make artificial PLJ microparticles. Actually, this concept is very good. So continuous media loaded PLJ. So you know, maybe many people know about this water oil water uh, immersion method. So fabricate using water oil water immersion Technique, briefly, frozen powder or condition media, CF with condition factor, condition media, they froze it and make it powder, dissolve in PVA alcohol, and then internal aqueous phage. And this alcohol was mixed in a metal chloride, including PLJ. This is some uh, lipid, which was oil. <coughs> yeah. And then, the mixture was then sonicate on ice. Next, primary immersion was immediately introduced in water with PVA to produce water or water immersion. Secondary immersion was immersified 
for 30 minutes and then stir evaporation 35 PLJ or micro particle centrifuge and freeze dry and then used. So for your understanding, this is the water. When you put the water in oil, you can do like this, right? And you, when you put this uh, water, this molecule with lipid, the lipid is the uh, oil is outer, oil is the PLJ polymer, and the water is inside. Inside there is conditioning media, and then this uh, uh, yellow PLJ when they meet water, also, yeah, this kind of things happen. This is called water oil water immersion. So when you uh, connect this and this, this inside of the blue is conditioning media, and this yellow one is PLJ. Okay, and then in this PLJ, they combine the cell membrane in this PLJ. This is their manner. So this is how they do. In two-day culture, three-day culture, two-day is only TCP in serum-free media. They collect condition media. In agarose cell, they make cell spheroid and then gather through the condition, uh, condition media. And then they check their serum-free media, nothing. 2D and 3D, they show some difference. 3D has more protein. And then, in this pro pure protein is using HCMS, they found hepon alpha signaling is highly expressed. And then they check their cell spheroid to confirm the hypoxia condition. So they use hydrox probe called pimonidazo. They stained it, but they found hypoxia is expressed well in cell spheroid. And they confirm, and then these two is linked together, and then rational, maybe certain uh, angiogenic molecule will express from the protein level. So this is their proteomics analysis. Compared to 2D, 3D is highly expressed VGF, EGF, HGF, and IGF, TGF beta. Also this kind of little bit inflammatory thing also expressed. No, they didn't incubate them hypoxia, but because of this cell spirit condition, the cell failed hypoxia, and then they express hepon alpha signaling. Yeah. And then, because of hepon alpha signaling, they obtain this angiogenic factor. And then they confirm by PCR using cell pellet. 2D cell pellet, 3D cell pellet, more expressing this angiogenic factor because of hepon alpha activation. And then they want to check the efficacy of this 2D and 3D condition factor using migration assay, recently performed by John. So the more cell, more migration. Three, they only incubate this condition media in this outer bottom layer, not in this cell containing site. So cell more go down. So more cell, more migration. And then in Hubeck, more tubular formation and more for the change. Yeah. And then they collect conditioning factor media for five days under serum free media. Yeah. This MSC, CD 2D and 3D, 2 ml of serum free media. And then monitor cell number, but no, no cell number change. The media was collected five days later after culture in cell free media. Media filter and uh, sterilized. And then, oh, actually, in this time, they didn't use, they didn't collect the EV. They just only use condition media. Okay. Uh, and yeah, in this factor, they confirm 3D condition media has better effect than 2D without any cell number change. And just only methodological performance that can reveal some difference. And then, this is their final goal. This is a uh, they collect conditioning factor. And then, in this cell spheroid, they do not want to remove it. 
So they collect cell membrane from the cell spheroid. So PLJ quantum factor using water oil water immersion, they make PLJ microparticle, and then this microparticle doesn't have any some good event in the cell. Maybe less retention in the cell tissue, so they want to incorporate cell membrane. They use these garbage things together. So the PLJ original and after coating with cell membrane, similar but little some rough, roughness, confirm the membrane coating, and then they can also check some this PLJ they can load of the interest of protein as well as a membrane coating. And then diameter, no change. And then this is very interesting. They check their this uh, they're using the facts and check some cell membrane marker, same as the uh, stem cell. This all kind of stem cell marker which is located in cell membrane. So they assume even though this is no live cell, but this microparticle that can cover with cell membrane, we can they can assume this is some cell-free artificial cell. Yeah, this uh, adipose drop MSC and the, their artificial microparticle have similar possible rate of all MSC marker. And then they confirm uh, conditioning media release. Actually, they did not use exact conditioning media. Instead, they used BCA, uh, PSA conjugate with FITC. So using the FITC, they check uh, with or with cell membrane coating release. And then this is real data from the conditioning media. After loading conditioning media in this microparticle, check VGF, EGF, IGF using ELIZA. They confirm. Uh, successfully release and load. And then finally, they implant their microparticle in this handling model. Without cell membrane, retention is very low. But uh, with cell membrane, retention is good. Even they inject in local injection. So why they use cell membrane? Because of their retention. More retention, more good event. And then they confirm the hind lip salvage effect in this, a, uh, this ASSP MP, more salvage you know, compared to other, even in 2D uh, just cell, 3D conditioning media, and then PLJ MP without cell membrane, without um, conditioning media. Yeah, this is some uh, arterial control, and then conditioning media control, and then this is some um, cell control, and this is their originality. So they can confirm salvage effect occur larger, highly in this group. And then they're confirming loading and release of conditioning media for angiogenesis. And then they want to go further. In this time, they want to inject in systemic manner. So they want to make cell membrane coating for long retention in system that delivery, so they fabricate nanoparticle. So in this time, they're using nanoparticle using PLJ, but and then for more systemic systemic circulation, they use cell membrane from red cell, I mean RBC or platelet. As you know, RBC and platelet cell membrane they can give more. Uh, blood circulation ability. So this is in their uh, nanoparticle with this cell membrane. And then diameter, no change. They, com they confirm the membrane coating. And then si uh, size, yeah, zeta size different. And then CFA release without with coating, same manner. And then they inject IV in this uh, heart infect model. Where they confirm myocardial infect condition. Ah, and then the, uh, one merit of the red blood cell, actually platelet cell membrane is for blood circulation. And then red blood cell, when certain infarct or certain injury occur, uh, the most 
initial cell that can be obtained in injured area is RBC. So they want to target this injured area. So half and half, they combine them together. So maybe this is one of the red one is for red cell, and this blue one is from the platelet. They can combine them together, half and half. And then they find out their interest of my nanoparticle using PAJ more conjugate in this myo-infarct site. Okay. And then their functionality is increased because of their proangiogenic effect. Increase in this functionality, left ventricular certain activity, and then infarct thickness increase and scar area decrease and confirmed by histology. So I think this is a very good study. Uh, without cell, they mimic the cell using cell membrane and conditioning factor. And then they try uh, systemic delivery or local delivery, depending on their size. Actually, their, part of their paper is from this 2017 nature communication paper. If, uh, we, because interesting point is that the author didn't cover each other. No single author is same person. But maybe they are impressed about this paper and then they publish in more good journal. And this exosome, they use uh, microparticle functional with a cardio stem cell membrane and secretome. And then they use human cardiocyte uh, stem cell from donor human heart. And it is very simple. I'm not very similar. This is a CSC. They collect cell membrane. And then they make conditioning media with cross factor. And then using same water, water, oil, water immersion, make microparticle, combine them together, and then inject this uh, myocardial infarct injury. And then this is their uh, material, their control group using without membrane and without cross factor, uh, without conventional media. And then they expect this kind of therapeutic event. Less apoptosis, more endogenesis. And then, as you can see, this is very interesting. Their format is similar. There is no single author uh, overlapping between this paper and the previous paper, 2017, but most of the yeah, characters are similar. Diameter, no change. Marker, no change. VGF, IGF, HGF, release, they can occur in this uh, conditioning media incorporated uh, microparticle. Yeah. Control microparticle is without membrane. Yeah. Without, without membrane, no change. And then they confirm the in vitro, some functionality of cardiomyocyte contractility, I didn't go detail. Yeah. Anyhow, they want to say their particle is effective for curing this microcardia infection model. Okay. Thank you.